Hey guys, what's going on? Tuo Cruz here with another bike commuting video here in Japan. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what is the best bike for bike commuting. So is it a road bike? Is it a mountain bike? Is it a gravel bike? Is it a fixie? What is it? We're going to be talking about all of these different options. For anyone who's new to the channel, my name's Cruz. I live and work here in Japan and I make videos about cycling and life here in Japan. So if you're interested in those things, first things first, be sure to subscribe. And if you're a returning subscriber, be sure to like the video so I'll continue making more videos like this. So anyway, down to the topic for today, I want to talk about what is the ultimate bike for bike committing. I just made a video on my channel talking about my impressions for being a full-time long distance bike commuter for a full year how it's changed me, how it's affected me. And during that time, I've experimented with a lot of different bikes and some bikes have had certain benefits, other bikes have had certain negative points. I wanna talk about it all today. Before we begin though, before we begin though, I wanna hear what you guys think. So what do you guys think is the ultimate commuter bike? Let me know down in the comments below and let me know if your opinion changes a little bit after watching my video. So. To begin, today I'm on my mountain bike. This is Midori-chan. Yes, I name all my bikes. And I have a separate video on my channel as well talking about all of my different bikes, but I've got a nice collection right now. I've got a couple fixie bikes. I've got a mountain bike. My wife has a mountain bike and road bike. I've also got a road bike and also a cyclocross bike. I think that's all for now. The only bikes I really don't have that much experience with for commuting bikes is the mini velo bikes, the folding bikes, and e-bikes. I have ridden a fair share of my e-bikes though, demoing them for some different bike companies. So, but I've never really used one as a daily bike commuter. So my advice on that topic is going to be a little bit limited. But anyway, let's go ahead and start with what I'm on right now. So I'm on a mountain bike. So I made a whole separate video dedicated to talking about my impressions of mountain bike commuting. I'm going to summarize that today. But in that video, I did get a lot of comments from a lot of people from around the world telling me they absolutely love commuting by mountain bike. And there's a lot of great benefits to commuting on a mountain bike. One is they are pretty much indestructible. Mountain bikes are designed to ride over a variety of different terrain. They're not gonna break whatever you ride them over. So if you ride them over some boulders, over some trail, on some pavement, wherever you ride, you're gonna be pretty comfortable. And that's another great point of the mountain bikes is just the comfort level. So the wider tires, the lower air pressure, you're gonna have a smooth ride. Like I'm riding pavement right now on my mountain bike, no problem, and it's super comfortable. I can go over bumps like this, no problem. I've got the suspension, I've got the tires, really comfy. And another great thing about mountain bikes is you can go over some pretty crazy stuff. Like I'm gonna go up this way, oh my gear, pretty heavy right now, but you get the point. You can ride over some stuff you maybe wouldn't feel as comfortable riding on a road bike. I ride this section on my road bike though as well, but definitely feel more stable and more comfortable doing it on the mountain bike. So the other great thing about commuting on the mountain bike is it opens up a couple different other routes. So maybe on your road bike, you wouldn't really want to go on a dirt path or something like that, or a path with some rocks, some other debris, but Mountain bike is like a tank, just rolls over everything and you're going to be comfy when you do it. Mountain bikes are also really great for beginners in multiple aspects. And one is the flat handlebar setup. So my wife personally really loves her flat handlebar setup. I just got her a new mountain bike for her Christmas presents and she by far prefers the flat bar setup compared to the road style handlebars. So really easy for beginners. It's a really natural position. The other great thing is the price point. There are so many low price point model mountain bikes available now. It is ridiculous. You can get a really good quality mountain bike for just a couple hundred dollars. And if you're willing to buy something used, you can get something great at a low price. Oh, police are out. Got to be careful here. Not breaking any cycling laws following the rules. Also going into weather. Weather is another big important factor with bike commuting. When you're commuting every day, you got to go through all the weather. So the other great thing about mountain bikes is they handle all weather great. Sunny days, of course, no problem. 
Rainy days, no problem. Muddy days, no problem. Snowy days, no problem. Icy days, you're gonna do better than pretty much any other bike out there, especially if you get some studded tires. We're gonna cross here. So in terms of weather and durability, mountain bikes pretty much destroy all the competition with gravel bikes getting a little bit close nowadays. So as for the downside of mountain bikes, the biggest thing is gonna be the weight. Mountain bikes are a lot more bulky and they're gonna be a lot heavier than their road bike counterparts, especially the cheaper ends, but that's generally not a problem unless you're doing a lot of climbing, like mountain biking in my hometown in the Midwest. We have no mountains, but we still call it mountain biking. So you can be riding like me. I'm mostly riding flat terrain today, just going up a couple small hills and it's nothing too bad. So even with a little extra weight, that's no problem. If you want to get a light mountain bike, unfortunately, that's going to cost a lot of money. So if you do want to get a really nice mountain bike, it does end up being on the expensive end. But you generally don't need something too expensive or too light as a commuter bike. Uh, actually, there's more climbing than I thought today. The one other disadvantage of mountain biking is the rapidly changing standards lately. So are you gonna get a 26 inch mountain bike, 27.5, 29? Is it gonna be through axle, quick release? Is it gonna be boost or is it gonna be standard? There's so many different options available now and full suspension, hardtail, there's so many options available that it can be really confusing, I think, for some new people into the mountain bike world. So that's the unfortunate reality right now. For me though, I say go 29er hardtail all the way. I mainly say that because I can't afford full suspension. I'd like to get a full suspension bike one day, but hardtails do the job. They're a grand cheaper for the same spec level and the best bang for your buck. Hardtail 29er. Well, we're on the topic of big tires and dirty rides. It seems natural that our next bike that we talk about is gonna be the gravel bike or cyclocross bike in my case. So what's the difference between a gravel bike and cyclocross bike? I could make a whole video about this, but in a quick summary, cyclocross bike is a more racy style gravel bike with less options like bottle cage mounts and bike rack mounts and stuff like that, and a little bit less clearance. Cyclocross tire clearance usually goes up only to like 34 or 35 or something like that. Whereas gravel bikes generally have more clearance. They'll go up to 40, maybe a little bit higher. And especially now, a lot more gravel bikes will have a ton of different mounting options all over the frame. So in general, the main difference is the amount of clearance and the amount of rack options to summarize anyway. So from a bike commuting standpoint, of course the gravel bike is gonna win out on the cyclocross bike. But if you're like me and you like cyclocross racing and racing in general, it makes a little bit more sense to go with the cyclocross bike because the extra weight, it's hard to be competitive in a high level cyclocross race. So if you're interested in racing, go with the cyclocross bike. If you're not planning to race anytime soon and you're just looking for comfort and options and variety, go with the gravel bike. As for differences between the gravel bike and mountain bike, one of the disadvantages of the gravel bike is there's not as much available options. This is changing lately as the gravel trend is getting more popular. More and more makers are making more gravel ranges, but there's definitely not as much availability yet compared to the range that you get for mountain bike options. But this is changing. They're also getting to be more affordable, just like the mountain bike range. Uh, the main differences between the gravel bike and the mountain bike, honestly, is the gravel bikes generally will have more mount areas on the frame. And right now, the clearance is pretty similar. And the geometry doesn't change that much, especially compared to like older mountain bike styles. One of the main differences is you're gonna have the drop handlebars and you're gonna have a rigid fork. And I'm actually personally really confused now. What is the difference between for example, like a flat bar gravel bike and a rigid 
29er. Like there's not gonna be that many differences there. You could have the same tire width, the same wheel size, and pretty much same setup between both bikes. So right now, gravel bikes and mountain bikes are kind of blurring the lines in between what is what. As for the other factors that I talked about, for example, weather, the weather factors should be the same for the gravel bike compared to the mountain bike. So because you can get studded tires, it should work in pretty much all weather conditions. And as for weight, which is one of the negative factors of the mountain bike, the gravel bike should lose a little bit of weight and it should be a little less expensive to get a slightly lighter build, mainly because it has the rigid setup and slightly smaller tire setup, depending on what option you use to build it up though. But overall, the gravel bike is a great option, especially if you're planning to strap a bunch of different bags and racks on your bike. You'll have unlimited options and really great solution, really fun little trend that we're seeing in the cycling world right now. And as I find myself entering less and less races now, actually my next bike, I'll probably move away from the cyclocross bike and hopefully get a gravel bike for myself one day. Moving next on the list, we're gonna go to the road bike, which is very similar to the gravel bike. Again, the main difference is the clearance is changing and the rack options are decreasing. So we go down to a really small clearance. Most road bikes nowadays will allow a clearance of up to 28 or 32 size tires. So definitely a lot smaller compared to the gravel bike. This helps the bike get more aerodynamic. It also helps it reduce weight. So the advantages, of course, of the road bike is it's going to be really fast, really lightweight, and also right now, there's a lot of really cheap options for road bikes, which is also great to see. Especially in Japan, which is the country that I live in, there's road bike fever here, and there's a bunch of different varieties and options of different road bikes you can get. Other advantages of the road bike is really quick acceleration, and the bikes can be really stiff and really responsive. So if you're riding a lot on main roads, if you're going on mountains, if you're on smooth roads, the road bike is a great option. Also, if you're interested in racing, like road racing is really, really fun. But some of the disadvantages include, because of the stiffness for commuting, like I just went over a bump right now. If I went over the same bump on my road bike, I would really feel that and that'd be really uncomfortable. And combine that with multiple bumps on the commute, multiple different sections, uh, something unexpected that you had to go over. And right now, this road is a little bit rough. There's a couple different bumps, holes in the ground. Like if you have potholes in your area, my hometown of Michigan, we have potholes everywhere. It could be not a very fun ride. And if you're commuting every single day, I've learned that the comfort factor is also extremely important. So maybe you could get away with it for like a day or two. But if you're riding every single day, and you're going over those same bumps, that's gonna have an impact on you. And it's really gonna wear you out. So I found when I rode my road bike every day, I actually get a lot more tired. So even though I'm saving more energy because the bike is lighter, I end up more tired and more sore just because of all the impact on the area that I'm riding. Keep that in mind if you're thinking about using your road bike as your commuter bike. Some other disadvantages of the road bike is the smaller clearance. So even if you wanted to put larger tires on it, you're not going to have that option. Whereas with, whereas with a cyclocross bike or gravel bike, you can put road size tires on there so it can ride just like a normal road bike, or you can put gravel tires on it. So you can get the best of both worlds. Whereas a road bike, you're just gonna be able to use it as a road bike. So if you're looking for something that's really versatile, you wanna get the best bang for your buck, I really don't think the road bike is a good option for you unless you're planning to race or unless you know you're only gonna be riding road and you're never gonna need it for anything else. Otherwise, I strongly recommend going with the gravel bike or cyclocross bike option because that way you're gonna allow yourself the options of the best of both worlds. You can ride gravel if you want and you can ride road if you want and you're not gonna really have to pay that much of a price because the weight difference isn't gonna be that different anymore with the equipment available now. It may sound like I'm ragging on the road bike's a little bit right now, but if you're interested in racing, 
on the other hand, road bikes is pretty much the way to go. Like if you wanna make a name for yourself and you wanna make yourself a successful racer, you gotta establish yourself on either the road or on the track. There's really no money in mountain biking, so unless you're at the top of the top, you're not gonna be scouted. You're, it's gonna be really hard to get scouted or really make any money, but I found when I raced the pro circuit in the US, there was a lot more money up for grabs compared to uh, mountain biking and those other things, but if you really wanna make money, you gotta come to Japan or Korea and become a track racer. Like those guys make bank. You just gotta qualify, go to the track school for one year and your starting salary is about 40 grand a year and pretty much only goes up from there. Moral of the story is don't try to become a pro cyclist if you wanna make a decent salary in your life unless you're in the top 1% of the 1% of pro cyclists in the world. You're not gonna make an income that's really worth it. These are uh, bitter words from a <laughs> ex-aspiring pro cyclist. Anyway, no regrets. I enjoyed the lifestyle while I did it and really enjoyed pursuing my passion. So no regrets. But at the same time, I really don't see that much value in just having a regular road bike unless you're planning to be racing. Moving on to the next category, that's gonna be the single speed. More specifically, I wanna talk about fixed gear single speed. So there's two options with this. There's the straight up track bike. So if you're gonna be riding on a velodrome, uh, this doesn't apply to you because this is a bike commuting video. So we're gonna be talking about the more street style fixed gear single speed bikes. With this bike though, there is a whole different variety of different setups. So it comes up to the person and their preference. So you can ride with flat bars, you can ride with drop bars. I have two uh, fixed gear single speed street bikes and one is set up with a drop bar, one is set up with a flat bar. I like both styles. So even though I did just rag on the road bike pretty hard, I have some pretty positive thoughts towards the fixed gear single speed, especially even with the road setup. Let me explain why I think that. So, so some of the great things about the fixed gear single speed compared to the normal road bike is cost and simplicity. So from a maintenance standpoint, the fixed gear single speed is by far the best option in this entire list. And the reason for that is because if you're using it well, you're not really using your brakes that often. So your brakes, your rims, aren't really gonna get that worn down. You don't have any shifters because it's a single speed and you only have one chain. And because it's set up as a single speed, the chain is perfectly straight. It also gets less wear, so you don't have to replace it as often. When you do replace it, it's super cheap because single speed chains are the cheapest type of chains and you don't have any other parts that you need to worry about replacing. So with the single speed, the only maintenance you really need is new chains every once in a while, maybe new brake pads every once in a while and new tires. That's pretty much it. Whereas all of the other bikes that I've mentioned so far have a whole drive chain system. So shifters and other parts that you're gonna have to worry about and keeping those well maintained. So for me, with my commuting route, usually cycling on the river path and going over some dirty roads, even though it is a little bit bumpier and rougher, it is nice having a, it is nice having a sort of bomb-proof, completely reliable bike that I never really have to worry about. If all of my bikes go down, this is the bike that usually lasts. And it's really nice and reassuring to have that bike and to have that security. It's also nice not having to destroy my really nice bikes that I'd rather use for my normal riding and not destroying them on my commute and letting my uh, fixed gear single speed being the one getting destroyed going through those rough conditions every day. One of the disadvantages of my fixed gear single speed though is the tire clearance is really small. So I've got 25s on mine, which is okay, but I definitely wouldn't mind having the option to put some 32s on there and get some extra comfort. So. If I ever am in the market for a new fixed gear single speed, I definitely wanna get something with a little bit more clearance. So maybe kind of like a hybrid between a gravel bike and fixed gear single speed, I think would be a really ideal commuting setup from all standpoints, from a cost standpoint, maintenance standpoint, and just reliability standpoint. That'd be a great bike. All right, I think I've talked about all of the main categories that I know really well so far. The only ones left are e-bikes and folding bikes and mini velos. That guy had some good fenders on his bike. That's another thing I wanna mention 
on this video is do not underestimate the value of fenders. That's something huge I've learned this past year is fenders are super important. So pretty much no matter what you use as your commuter bike, make sure you have some fender options on there. They are a lifesaver and by far the best investment you can make on improving your commuter bike. But anyway, as for the last two categories, as for e-bikes, I've never really used one of these like reliably every single day. I have demoed them for like a day here and there every once in a while, but that's about it. So I can't say too much to experience it using them every day. I think there are a lot of advantages. Like if you have to go on a lot of hills or carry a lot of luggage, or if you don't want to sweat when you get to work, I think there are some huge advantages to using an e-bike. The one really bad thing about e-bikes in Japan though is Japan only allows e-bikes that are assist, otherwise they'd be classified as like regular vehicles, which makes sense, but they restrict the assist limit to only I think like, what is it, 20 kilometers an hour or 25 kilometers an hour, which is really slow. And for someone like me, my average commuting speed is above this. So if I'm commuting at my normal speed, I would be above the speed where I'd be allowed to get any assist. So the bike would be basically useless for me. The only way I would be able to get any assist is to force myself to go slower to the point where I can get assist. And so it just doesn't seem worth it at that point anymore. So because of that, I'm not really considering getting an e-bike here in Japan anyways, at this point in time. But I would like to get a mountain bike e-bike though for my wife. And that way we'd both be able to enjoy mountain biking together a little bit more because I'm obviously in a little bit better fitness than she is. And that way she could keep up with me on the climbs without hating me. <laughs> and we could both enjoy ourselves a little bit more. Mountain biking here in Japan is a little bit more intense than back home because mountain biking here is like real mountain biking. Like you're riding up a mountain and it's pretty much you ride up the mountain and you ride down the mountain. There's not many trails, unfortunately. Whereas in my home, we have no mountains, but we have great mountain bike trails. Anyway, that's off the point. The last category is the mini velos and folding bikes, which are crazy popular here in Japan. I just passed one right there at that bike uh, storage area. This is something that I never really knew about before coming to Asia because these don't really exist in the US outside of like super metropolis areas like New York City and places like that. You never see any of these mini velos or folding bikes in like the Midwest, but there are some really good advantages to having them here in Asia. Oh, what's this person doing? What are you doing, lady? <laughs> Endless backup. So again, with these, I've never personally owned them, but I have strongly considered getting a folding bike for myself as like a travel bike because they're super convenient. You can fold it down into a suitcase. So if you need to travel for work or something, you can bring it with you on the suitcase, look like a normal person. And then from the train station, you can take the bike out of the suitcase, put the suitcase on the rack of the bike, and then ride to wherever you need to go, which seems like really great. As a commuting bike, I'm a little bit worried about the wheel size. Like, would the smaller wheel size be comfortable on long commutes? I think for shorter commutes, it'd be really comfortable and really good, but I don't know. I've never used it for a long distance. So if anybody has used it for a long distance, let me know down in the comments what you think about the folding bikes. Are there any good options out there? So my job here in Japan is actually a distribution company and our parent company is connected to Turn and Dahon. So I've been considering getting a bike from them because we can get our work discount there. So I've been thinking about getting a folding bike for myself for this purpose. But anyway, if you guys have any recommendations and let me know your experience down below, I'd really appreciate reading that. The other advantage of the folding bike is being able to bring it on public transportation. So for example, let's say it's nice and sunny in the morning and you ride your bike to work and you're all happy and then lunch comes around and then the clouds get dark and it starts raining and you're like, crap, I got to ride home in this garbage. But if you're on a folding bike, you can just ride to your local station and fold up the bike, bring it on the train with you, no problem. And you can go home nice and dry. So I think that's a huge advantage, especially if you live in an area with a good public transportation system like buses and trains. You can bring your normal road bike on the train as well, but you need to put it in a special bag and it's still just really big and crowded and you're technically not allowed to bring it during rush hour. So 
it's just a pain in the butt. I wouldn't do that. But anyway, overall, I think the folding bike and mini velos have some good value for some certain situations. Let's finish that up there. And I'm gonna finish up this video because I'm almost home and I'm hungry. It's time to eat. If you're thinking about getting in the bike commuting and you're not sure what kind of bike to get, what bike to use, I hope this video helps you in making your decision. If you're still not sure, you still have some questions, write them down below in the comments and I'll be sure to get to them. Before you leave though, don't forget to answer the ultimate question of this video. Which bike, which type of bike is the best bike for bike commuting? Write it down below, let me know. I'm really curious to see which type of bikes gets the most response. So if you're a road bike fan, write road bike below in the comments. If you're a gravel bike fan, write gravel bike, mountain bike, write it down. And I'm really excited to see all that data later. As for me personally, what I would choose as the best commuting bike, I would have to say a single speed gravel bike with disc brakes. This would be my ideal setup. I don't have a bike like this right now, unfortunately, but we all have our dream bikes and never enough N plus one, right? Anyway, that's it for today, guys. Every day on a bike is better than any day in one of those cars stuck in this horrible traffic. Enjoy the ride, stay safe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Later.